There's a plethora of progressive candidates that can potentially defeat Donald Trump in 2020. One of those individuals, perhaps at the top of my list, is a U.S. senator from, I believe the state is Vermont, that goes by the name of Bernie Sanders. Now, people are going to say, Mike, come on, he's going to be like a thousand years old by then, right? Don't count him out just yet, because Bernie Sanders now has the name recognition to get him through a primary, uh, and if we change the leadership at the DNC, there won't be bias against him. And Bernie Sanders himself is not ruling out a 2020 run. Associated Press explains Bernie Sanders is leaving open the possibility of another presidential bid as shell-shocked liberals focus on helping the Democratic Party rebuild after Donald Trump's victory. Four years is a long time from now, said the 75-year-old Vermont Independent, noting that he faces re-election to the Senate in 2018, but he added, we'll take one thing at a time, but I'm not ruling out anything. So this is what many of us needed to hear, uh, because we don't know who it is that will be the challenger to Donald Trump in 2020. But if anyone can beat Donald Trump in 2020, it's Bernie Sanders. Now, there are other people who could potentially defeat Donald Trump as well. So first, and in no particular order, is Elizabeth Warren. Now, this is a big if. She's no longer at the top of my list, for sure, because what she did during the primary proved to us that she doesn't necessarily have the spine to stand up for what's right. So I don't know that she's going to have the unequivocal support from progressives. Would I personally support her? Yes, I would. But the problem is, I don't know that every other progressive would, because we're still very hurt from what she did to Bernie, or what she didn't do specifically during the primary. She campaign for Hillary Clinton. She ignored Bernie Sanders. It's not acceptable. So I'd say Elizabeth Warren does have a shot, more so than any corporatist Democrat, but her chances are harmed now, and she does have baggage that she didn't have before. Another choice is Tulsi Gabbard. Now, Tulsi Gabbard is someone who is progressive. She's charismatic. I think that she could potentially be a choice uh, that will run. She now has a progressive following. Now, another one is Nina Turner. Now, for me, I stated that I really want Nina Turner to be president, but I was thinking, you know, she's only a state senator. She has to run for governor in Ohio first. No, scrap all of that. What we have to do if we want to be successful is we have to scrap the old way of thinking. Donald Trump won with zero political experience. So gone are the days where you need experience, where you have to, you know, follow the same route as all the other presidents. You have to be a senator and, and, and maybe a governor. No. Those days are gone. If Nina Turner wants to run, regardless if you become governor or not, you can run. All you need to do is convince the American people that you're on our side. Nina Turner did that a very long time ago, and she has what it takes to defeat Donald Trump. Now, also, Senator Jeff Merkley from Oregon. He's the only senator with the guts that endorsed Bernie Sanders. And if he decided to run... I think he could win. Now we have also Keith Ellison. Keith Ellison was one of the first people to come out and endorse Bernie Sanders. And he might actually be the new DNC chair if Bernie Sanders has anything to say about it. But he's someone who is a progressive. He has the entire progressive movement behind him. He could win. Another one, Raul Grijalva. Yes, I'm going to pick another Bernie. Don't think about how charismatic the candidate is. Think about what America is looking for. We're looking for someone who is not the status quo, who's not the norm. Raul Grijalva would be a phenomenal choice to run for president. He may not want to, but I think he's a quirky guy. But most importantly, he has the policies and he's progressive. And that's basically on every single policy issue. I agree with him on quite a bit. So Raul Grijalva, he's an option. Now, finally, this is going to be a really unorthodox choice. Um, who can potentially threaten Donald Trump? Jill Stein. Now, here's what needs to happen. If Jill Stein does want to have a chance at actually defeating Donald Trump and becoming president, she would have to run in the Democratic Party. Now, I don't think Jill Stein is willing to do that, but if she did actually decide to run for president in the Democratic Party, she could very well have a chance because she already has a gigantic following. You don't have to worry about her being a spoiler. And Jill Stein, I agree with her on 99.9% .9 of the policy issues, so I think that if she were to run, 
she could win. And she already has these intricate policies that will help us defeat ISIS, that will help us move towards renewable technology. And yes, her goals are very ambitious, and they're going to try to do to her what they did to Bernie Sanders and say, this is all just so unrealistic. But she is someone who could really fire up the Democratic base. And if they're willing to embrace someone that's not from within the Democratic Party, someone from the Green Party, someone who's an independent, then they could have a chance. And we saw that they tried to shit on Bernie Sanders, Democratic Party establishment members, that is, because he was an independent. They said, you're not a true Democrat, so why would you even run an our party? Look, do you want to build a movement? Do you want to win? Do you want the party to grow or not? Because if you shut people out, that's not how you win elections. You need to embrace a large coalition of people who are progressive, regardless if they're independents, regardless if they're Green Party members, regardless if they're Democrats, regardless if they're Republicans. If you're progressives, if you're against corruption, if you're against money in politics, if you want to fight against climate change, embrace progressives regardless of their party party affiliation or lack thereof here's what you should not do do not run anyone associated with hillary clinton anyone that was a cheerleader for hillary clinton kristen gillibrand uh certainly not tim kane anyone who was a cheerleader for hillary clinton with the exception of elizabeth warren i think they're gonna lose badly donald trump would win again now here's the thing that everyone needs to realize in the democratic establishment the era of Clinton Democrats is over. It's done. That's behind you, unless you want to lose again. If you really want to win, then you need to step aside and allow real progressives, anti-corporatist, pro-working class progressives to take over the party because these corporatist, centrist, warmongering, you know, Wall Street shills like the Clintons are not going to get you into the White House. It's not going to win you back the Senate. And it's not going to win you back the house. Now, there is a caveat to this because even though all of these progressives are great options, this will be a different election in 2020. 2020 is a long ways away and it could be an entirely different era in American politics. And Donald Trump might actually be more difficult to defeat in 2020 than he would have been uh, now. Now, the reason why I say this is because Donald Trump, he could be one of two types of presidents. One is that he could be a disaster. Uh, his own party, establishment Republicans, could work to undermine him. Democrats, if they actually get their act together, they could try to obstruct Donald Trump if they're able to take back the Senate, and that could make him look less efficient. Uh, he could just prove to everyone that he's the blithering idiot that he really is and just be a disaster. He could do things that really are just not acceptable to the American people. If he really does try to ban Muslims from entering or exiting the country, it's going to hurt him, I think. So that's one way that would make Donald Trump more easy to defeat. If he is going to be the way we all think he is going to be and the way we're all expecting him to perform. But here's what I fear now. Donald Trump could potentially be more of a threat in 2020 than he is now because he's given the keys to the White House with not just the House, but the Senate as well. So when he gets in, he could pass anything that he wants to. He has all branches of government on his side. And so even if it's things that are bad, I mean, if he focuses on things like infrastructure spending, if he defeats the TPP and uh, vetoes it, kills it, which he will, that will uh, get progressives on his side and people will just warm up to the thought of Donald Trump. And uh, people who were kind of swing voters, who were on the fence on who to choose between between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump, well, the fact that he is able to pass policies because he has both houses of Congress on his side will give him this veneer of effectiveness and make him look like a really efficient leader. And then when you go into the 2020 election, people will think, well, you know, the thing about Donald Trump is... You know, I, I like the way things are going. Things are going as terrible as people predicted. So I'm just going to vote to keep Donald Trump. I don't think we need to change course right now with the Democrat. That's what I fear. And another thing is that this could change if Democrats take back the Senate in 2020 or in 2018. But the problem is that demographics favored them in this election cycle. They don't favor them in the next election cycle. So it's going to be more difficult for them to take back the Senate. And if Donald Trump has the 
entire Congress behind him for four years, that will make him a very powerful president. And we could see this Reagan effect where he gets in and passes all these policies and he moves not just Republicans to the right, but Democrats to the right as well and just makes him incredibly popular. And if Americans like that, they're going to think, why do I need a Democrat? Why change course? This could be Reagan all over. Now, again, he could be a disaster. But if he's not, if he actually is able to put forth a lot of policies, people could just like the fact that Congress is getting things done and he could be reelected. So Donald Trump may actually be more difficult to beat. However, getting back to the subject at hand, if anyone's going to be Donald Trump, it has to be a true progressive. Otherwise, we're stuck with him for eight years. Don't put forth a corporatist Democrats, but I'm afraid they haven't learned their lesson yet. <laughs>